Welcome to Missing the Mark, where we look for meaning in strange places. I'm Christopher. Today I'd like to talk about why it is that heaven is, metaphorically, above us, and hell is, metaphorically, below us. And it's actually, a, it's a relatively simple thing, and in some sense relatively obvious if you think about it, but um, the thing about things being above us is that it takes a lot of power to be up. Like, you know, a simple jump. Not easy to do, and you come right back down. It's not easy to stay up. And so, you know, think about even amongst human machines. Airplanes take a lot of fuel in order to stay up in the air. Helicopters, which actually hover there, which is a little bit closer to the idea of heaven just being above us, take even more fuel. Helicopters burn astonishing amounts of fuel, actually, in order to do the hovering for which they are so famous. Not actually most of what they do because it's so incredibly inefficient. They, you know, are tend to be used more for vertical takeoff and moving somewhere and stuff, uh, precisely because they, they are a lot more fuel efficient when they're actually moving anyway. Um, I, I mean, in, in complicated and so on. But uh, hovering, it just, it, it burns astonishing amounts of fuel to hover. And so, um, even before the advent of machines, we just happen to be familiar with machines, it takes a lot of power to hover. Birds can fly, but they're incredibly light, and uh, they don't fly really for very long. There are a few minor exceptions, um, certain types of birds that like to do transatlantic flights, for example. But in general, um, it takes an astonishing amount of power, and the heavier you are, the far more astonishing amount of power it takes. So if you think about this, metaphorically speaking, heaven being above us, heaven being up there, it is the highest thing, it is therefore the most powerful thing within this realm of metaphor. So when you want to talk about something that is um, incredibly powerful or incredibly perfect because power and perfection are related to each other, um, a little bit subtle, but especially when you get to metaphor, they're related to each other, um, the, uh, something that is able to, uh, it's really power under control that is, is we're related to perfection. And to be able to simply remain above us indefinitely is to be phenomenally powerful and under complete control. And so this is therefore a metaphor for perfection. On the flip side, hell is below us. Well, here's the thing. We have enough power to like keep ourselves up. We have enough power to not be under the dirt, covered over by things. We have enough power to be sort of in the middle, somewhere in between far down and high up. Hell, therefore, being below us as a metaphor for damnation, is if you think about it, when a person becomes sick, what do they do? Well, they lie down, they have trouble standing up. And so um, it is a metaphor for degeneration precisely because they lack even the normal amount of power to be higher up. Now, obviously, in um, in art, you're not going to really represent things this way. It gets represented more visually interesting ways. So you have like underground chambers with devils using pitchforks and and so on in order to torment people. But the actual metaphor of heaven being above and hell being below is about power under control. If you have a little bit of power under a little bit of control, like a human being, you can stand up, you might be able to jump, you might be able to climb, you can build buildings, but you know, that's kind of about it. You're not gonna be able to just, you know, float up there. And so things that are far more power under far more control, that's to say greater degrees of perfection and importance and so on, are just naturally metaphorically up that way because it, you can't be up that way without having enormous amounts of power and control. In like manner, things that are even worse are things below us, because, you know, at, normally you can at least keep yourself off of, you know, out of the dirt. And so, as things get worse, you get lower and lower. You're not even able to hold yourself up in the way a human being is. And so you get these metaphorical directions. Then, you know, art tends to be embellished, but, you know... Just look at what artists do for anything. They embellish everything in all sorts of strange and typically highly inaccurate ways. I mean, heck, just look at the covers for novels or uh, magazines, if you can find magazines. Um, and wherever you have an artist who is representing the story inside, they usually don't get the details even of the story they're drawing a cover for correct. Expecting artists to draw accurate depictions of anything 
Well, if you're going to do that, you're going to be very disappointed. Let me put it that way. Artists simply don't draw accurate things. They draw visually suggestive things. And, um, yeah, let's just leave it at that. So, um... I don't think there's anything... I can go off on digressions, of course, but I'm going to try to actually not do that today. I think that's kind of enough. That's where this metaphor comes from and why this metaphor really makes sense. And, um, you know, and, and just sort of a general warning of um, don't try to read more out of metaphors than is, you know, that anyone put into them or is there to be taken. And, uh, yeah, hope this helps in understanding that sort of metaphor. Until next time... May you hit everything you aim at.